it's important that we remove all the oil from the slides that we use and for that we can use chem wipes. So we're going to take our chem wipe and make sure that we get all the oil off of our slide. If the slide comes from a slide box or a tray, we want to make sure that we replace it properly um, face up, not upside down. Okay. And next what we're going to do is we want to make sure that we clean our microscope lenses. And for cleaning the microscope lenses, remember, we only use the high quality lens paper. So we aren't going to use chem wipes, nor Kleenex, nor paper towels. Um, anything other than lens paper will scratch the coating on the lenses and potentially could destroy the lens. So um, don't be afraid to use multiple pieces of lens paper. And what I'm going to do is I, I would start by cleaning the scanning lens. And then move over to my high, excuse me, to the low power lens. Okay. Very important to check the high dry lens because the high dry lens is so long. Um, if there is immersion oil on the slide, by accident we might drag the high dry lens through the immersion oil, and we'll get immersion oil on the high dry lens. Many of the microscopes, you'll notice that the high dry lens appears cloudy, and that's because by accident immersion oil has dried on the lens, and now the image is very very cloudy. And very importantly, if we've been using our oil immersion lens, we want to double check that um, oil immersion lens and make sure that we get all the oil off. And you put a little bit of pressure on the lens, you'll see it retracts. Sometimes there's a lot of oil there and you'll need to use multiple pieces of lens paper to almost like you're milking the oil out. And again, we don't want to leave the oil there because it will dry and create a fuzzy image. And then we use a separate piece of paper, lens paper, to clean the ocular lenses. Um, uh, oils from our eyelashes can dirty the ocular lenses. If folks are, are um, wearing makeup, the makeup might be transferred to the ocular lenses, so that's really important. All right, so um, in addition, um, when we're replacing our microscopes, um, we can lower the substage condenser. Very importantly, we want to make sure the mechanical stage has been centered. So you can see right here, the arm of the mechanical stage is sticking out quite, quite a bit beyond the stage. So if we put that back in the microscope cabinet, it'd be easy for it to be bent. So what I want to do is make sure that I can center the mechanical stage so the arms aren't sticking out um, beyond the stage. And I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that this part of the mechanical stage is flush with the stage. I'd make sure that my rheostat was, was reduced down to one. Uh, I want to make sure that I've turned off the light source and finally I want to um, unplug and gently wrap the cord around the microscope and we'll, sh we'll demonstrate how to do this because there's, there's correct and incorrect ways to wrap the cord around the microscope. Returning the microscope to the cabinet, you always want to use a two-hand carry. You're going to have you're going to um, grasp the arm with one hand and you'll support the base by placing your other hand beneath the base. You want to hold it close to your um, body um, and because sometimes the lab is crowded it actually helps to hold your elbows inward. It makes it less likely that you're going to bump into somebody. And then when you replace the microscope on the shelf, again make sure you don't drag it um, or push it um, across the shelf because the little rubber pads will catch and the microscope will bounce and that can ruin the lens and the mirror system.